time to gear up, Guardian. Welcome back. Ristophilus here. We're going to go over a build today. It's kind of like a Guardian Boot Camp Episode 3 in a way, but we're going to talk about Outbreak Perfected, Strat Options, Gear Options, the whole role for the Sentry, and I introduce to you... Die Hard. If you're coming from another role, such as the Reaper, over to the Sentry to check this build out, let's go over all the perk options that we have with the armor. So, Umbral Strike, Multi-Kills, grant a damage buff against Taken, clears when you damage a Taken Combatant, then it stacks up to 5 times. Safe and Sound, starts the health regeneration process when you're near the bank. That's pretty beast, and it's also a primary focus with the build. We have Invader Tracker, you damage the Invader, and now the whole squad can see. And then Light of the Defender, max stats, and the Well of Light doing damage. Well of Radiance is what this build is based around. Divine Protection is a cool perk to have. It's nice when it's there, but it's not such a grenade-heavy build, and I'll explain more of that as we go along. Benevolent Dawn is really the main focus here. That means when they get inside your rift or your well, you get a massive recharge of grenade, melee, and rift energy, and the more mods stack, the faster that it goes. Guiding Flame is one of those perks we're going to be needing, but it's still not the main focus compared to some other things that we're going to be doing. It's all about the job this build is trying to perform for the role that it's playing as a sentry. So, let's talk about the stats now. 2 mobility, 2 resilience, and 9 recovery. I know you probably almost threw up when you heard the 2 mobility, but main focus here is the recovery rate and the recharge rate. If you can't fit the mobility in, don't even try to build for it. Just focus on the recovery, focus on your recharge rate, because that's going to be way more important than what that 6 and lower mobility would even do for you to begin with. 7 and up is always a good thing. One of the main focuses in your job is keeping the dump station clean while your reapers go out and do the reaping. Your second job is, if they call you over to come grab moats, then that's when you're going to come over and grab the moats immediately, just dro drop what you're doing, and then they'll follow you back and help you take out the dump station, and then they'll go back to take care of the adds. You don't have to use these weapons, though we are going to talk about the weapons you must use on the boss DPS phase. It's a part of this build. Let's get on into the build now. The helmet. A three recovery helmet. Whatever reserves that you want to do, whatever finder you want to do, and whatever supercharged perk or targeting adjuster perk you want to use, that is completely up to you. Just do the impact mod and the three recovery. Like I said, if you want to do something like fusion rifle targeting, because a fusion rifle is going to be one of the main weapons you're going to need. So is a shotgun. So if you want to do heavy lifting, things like that. Tractor cannon is a part of the build for the boss DPS phase, and then for the primary weapon, it's going to be built around the outbreak perfected. So if you want to do light reactor because you're going to have a fusion rifle, you know, things like that. Like I said, your main focus is keep the dump station clean. So if you want to use a shotgun for that, if you want to use outbreak perfected, that's fine. But the boss DPS phase is going to be the tractor cannon and a void fusion rifle. So build your helmet how you want. You just got to copy that three recovery, find the tier three armor that has it, smack on a melee mod and you're good. Moving on to the arms, it's going to be a one mobility, a two recovery throw a paragon mod on it and use momentum transfer because it's all going to go back to getting the melee back to have that for the boss dps phase i'll show you the strategy to that and how exactly you need to do it in order when we get to that phase use whatever finder you want whatever reserve you want like a shoddy reserve a fusion reserve scavengers it's completely up to you on that but build for that bank station because you're going to need the ammo Moving on to the chest piece, a 3 recovery chest piece. The resilience doesn't even matter there. Use another paragon mod, and then do whatever unflinching you want to do based on the weapons you're going to choose to load out with, like a fusion rifle so you're not flinching at the boss is shooting at you when you're doing the boss DPS phase. You need to have something to just focus around that, and then whatever reserve you want to use for the weapon that you're choosing, obviously. So, moving on to the leg piece, you're going to be using the Luna Faction Boots. 1-1-1, leave them the same stock. Use another Paragon mod. That's going to be your third Paragon mod. It doesn't really matter. You can use the collection version of the Luna Faction. The perk on it is not really mattering. You're just getting the benefit of that exotic and having that no reload going for the whole squad. And those three Paragon mods stacked is what's going to keep that thing coming back even faster than it would if it didn't have those on there. And then take an Armaments just to get heavy ammo whenever you need it. If you don't need it, let the other people get the taken armaments, but you need to make sure you call that out because you need heavy more than anybody else during the boss DPS phase. So call that out if you need to proc the taken armaments before that happens. 
Some might say, why do recuperation since you have all these recovery options and rifts and stuff? It still comes in handy, and the little bit that the recharge gives you for the orbs just isn't really worth it. Taking armaments, if you've never seen it, you just get a grenade kill on the taken, and then you get heavy ammo. So make sure you call that out and have communication with your fire team if you need that ammo. Now let's talk about Outbreak Perfected. It may seem like it doesn't do a lot of damage from afar. I actually thought that when I first started shooting it. I was like, eh, what's this gun all about? You know what I mean? But then I read the perks on it. What happens is you do rapid hits or precision kills. It makes these nanite things that swarm around enemies attach themselves to it. And then the more that are attached to the target, the more damage that it will do. So you just keep shooting it. You keep spamming it inside the Lunar Rift. You keep ramping up damage. You keep taking a bunch of massive targets out. And you can even do this from any type range. It just it shreds so much if you're not able to get it just message me if you're on PlayStation 4 I can help you get it this weapon for your build two clips on a high value target it didn't tell me that I marked it to do bonus damage so I'm not sure if I was doing it there or not this was just a game prime private match when I was testing this against like a go figure and two clips with this fast shooting one now let's throw on the go figure and see how many clips it takes you'll notice that the first clip won't even remove the shield on it so you're doing more damage than this and shooting it way faster so once you get the catalyst for it what it does is it keeps chaining enemies that died with nanites on them which means it'll keep chaining all over and over and over again so when you have that mixed with the Luna faction well it's just insane amounts of damage you're gonna be able to do to enemies here's a good strat you can do on the deep six just plant your rift right here and you can help out your two reapers going to town trying to get those moats collected and made. You're also near the moat so you can pick them up if you have to run back to the dump station. But you're also in plain line sight of the bank station as well. So all you really got to do is turn around either way. Either turn and help the reapers out or turn and help the bank station out. Which is your job anyway. So that's your main focus. But you still have the opportunity to help out in both ways. You can see the bullets climb from 10 a body shot, 17 a crit shot all the way up to 44 a crit shot and I'm not sure what the body shot even went up to but you'll see a 44 in there and then it ends with a 71 insane amount of damage so 51 a headshot all the way up to 132 a headshot so it's like two and a half times the damage here's another good area you can plant your rift down or your well down whichever to help out your teammates right here on this little ledge outside of this building like the porch area and then you can turn right around once you're done here and if there's any kind of bank problems going on you can start spamming over there as well let the nanites go to work so if ads were to be right here you can work both ways just by standing at this station and then if you're called over say that moats are needing to be collected they can call you over to collect and you can all go back together right here is the benevolent dawn with the three paragon mods so I'm gonna drop it and then you'll see somebody walk in here in just a second they're gonna get touched by my rift and then you see the rapid surge of the Paragon mod taken off with those three. If you have one on, it's not nearly as fast. Three will pretty much guarantee it all the time, so you're prepared for any kind of situation that were to go wrong. I wanted to display what kind of damage it will do to a crowd of Cabal and Gambit Prime. This is where yellow bars and orange bars are all mixed up. You just drop the well and start making the Danites go to work. I'm not sure how much damage I end up ramping up to, but here in a second on the yellow bar in the back, it starts at like 44 every three shots, something like that. And then it ramps up to 118 per shot at the end. So you see like 46, 23s, 46, and it goes up to like the 50s. Then watch this final shot. So plus all the little nanites. I don't know how to figure all that damage going on, but that is retarded. It's like three times the damage. such as on this boss right here we'll see how how much it'll ramp up to it's insane though I wanted to record what it did on just the first wave so I didn't do any more waves on this I just did that one wave and then let the timer run out to see what the damage number would be at pretty much that's not counting if a primeval slayer times two three and four were all on I couldn't imagine an entire team with just using these but we'll get to the actual boss DPS strat later but just that one wave was hundred and nine thousand damage in the Well of Radiance.
Now let's talk about the do's and don'ts of the boss DPS strategy as well as the weapon loadout. So I talked about the tractor cannon of course, masterworked with 7 rounds. To go with your tractor cannon, use a void fusion rifle. I highly recommend a void air intel with a 900 charge rate with liquid coils and high impact reserves if you have that on hand. If not, just keep grinding the gunsmith, he'll eventually drop it, and then use whatever you want to for your primary. I chose better devils because it's a hard hitting primary, especially when you're in the Luna faction well. Now let's talk about what not to do when you do the boss DPS strategy. So don't do this. Don't walk up and start smashing all the way and then doing your melee and then backing up and trying to do your well last. Because here's what happens. You already hit him with the tractor cannon, then you wasted your melee, and now he's tethered and you have a well that's not even inside of the well of light. And your allies don't even care about it at this point because they're so worried about clearing this area out. So make sure you have a line shot and don't do the well last. That's the first thing that'll happen. Now I'll show you this again. The do not do's. I just wanted to make sure that I showed the bad example and the good example. There's so many randoms that I pair with, but they do it all out of order. They'll be meleeing, doing the tractor cannon, and then they, they don't back up enough or know where they're even at to lay the well down properly. And it just screws out the entire strategy. You waste your ammo, you waste your time. That whole phase is just ruined at that point. So always do your well first. And now let's demonstrate the correct way to do it as far as the recharge rates and everything that's going on during this boss DPS phase the correct way. Pay attention to the order of operation. So the well goes down, now we have the tractor cannon. I'm going to do the melee third so I have enough time to come back to the well to do the air intel. I'm going to throw the grenade right now. I would have thrown the grenade but we're using the primaries, we're not doing a one phase boss melt. And then nobody used their super on top of that. My melee's back, so I would have ran up again with the tractor cannon, hit him with the melee again. If Nova bombs were flying and other supers were flying on top of all this, this would have been no doubt a one wave with all the supers going on. But with randoms, it's unpredictable. But make sure you get your rift down. If you die and you don't pop it and nobody gets you, then your other three teammates are just screwed for that boss DPS phase, and you gotta wait, you know, to the next one pretty much. You have to wait and run back and by that time you know it's already a screwed thing so make sure that you get that down at all cost get that rift down and then if you're going to use enhanced heavy lifting or whatever to charge your super or if you need heavy ammo for the next round for your taken armaments you make sure you use that communication to get that to your team i ended up using the tractor cannon to proc the enhanced heavy lifting so i will get my super for the third wave i drop down the well now i'm going to run over to the tractor cannon this time they want to throw a nova bomb and then boom, hit the melee, tractor cannon. I knew they were dead at that point, so the order really didn't matter. But that is how you do it, bros. That is the build. That's the strategy. That is all you need with the Die Hard. If you liked it, leave that a thumbs up. Share this video with people. Subscribe, kick it, join the Discord. If my channel has ever helped you out, is it worth a mug, bro? Teespring.com slash Rostophilus. I got a lot of merchandise to help keep this channel going. So if I've ever had a positive influence or impact on your Destiny gameplay experience, I would highly appreciate some support so we can grow this channel and grow our community, bros. Again, I appreciate all that you do. Thanks for viewing, and I'll catch y'all next time. In space.